Welcome to Collision, the podcast where we discuss the fun and sometimes complicated collision of real life and trusting God. If you're curious or confused about how to engage the world we live in, we hope our conversation here helps. Now, let's get into this episode of Collision. Friends, welcome to the Collision Podcast. My name is James, and I'm here with my buddy, Matt Manning. Matt, whose voice was that at the beginning of our podcast today? Yeah, man, that's our buddy, Joel. We're big time now. We have, we have a herald. Yes, but yo, that's you know, awesome. Yeah, we don't know what that's called in like the real radio world. <laughs> you know, uh, somebody who does a lead-in voice for you, but we're calling them our herald. Absolutely. Yep. A shout out to Joel. He is a, a great guy who, who we love here at Crossroads, and uh, God has just done some amazing things in his life. So he, uh, he was excited to, to be a part of our podcast, and uh, he's going global, man. Yeah, you should uh, share the story about his, his thing at work, the guy that spoke to him at work. That's a great story. Oh, yeah. So I, I called him and I asked him about it, and I kind of explained our podcast, and we need a, a voice intro, and uh, he was all into it and said, man, I'd be honored. I love the church and any way that I can help. And then uh, the very next day at work, uh, he was having a conversation with a buddy, and his buddy said, at the end of it, said, you know, you missed your calling, Joel, and and uh, he said, you, you should have been in radio. And Joel's off-the-cuff response was, I'm I'm on a podcast. I'm bigger than radio. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm going internet. I'm going internet, baby. Yeah, so, love well, it. That's, that's cool. Yeah, we love Joel. We're grateful for uh, more than his voice, but his voice is pretty awesome for our podcast. So today we're uh, talking toxic masculinity, and uh, it's kind of a hot culture or a hot topic in our culture. And uh, what comes to mind for you when, when you hear toxic masculinity, James? Yeah, you know, the, I mean, outside of our social narrative on it, I think what it brought up for me was that feeling I had growing up when I as a, a man and, you know, pretty skinny all my life. I mean, I, I've always been tall, but I've been pretty skinny. And those situations where you bump up against guys that have a little more bravado and uh, swagger, mm. You know, and you know, uh, kind of like you know, the, yeah, they uh, they think they're they're bigger and better, or smarter than other guys, and just like it, it brings up some of those feelings that I had growing up of just kind of like, uh, how do you size yourself up? Uh, do you just walk mm. away from certain guys because it's just not worth it? So, um, yeah, yeah, whole whole different narrative. Yeah, for me, when we started getting into this topic, immediately I was like, you know, when it comes to toxic masculinity, I think I'm confused. <laughs> like what, what exactly is it that is, you know, toxic? Cause we heard a lot of different definitions of it. And so I started reading some articles and one of the first article that I came across, I read it and I put it down and I thought to myself, that was actually a pretty good picture of biblical masculinity. <laughs> and uh, this whole author wrote an article of how it was toxic. And so I think that when it comes to toxic masculinity, there is a lot of um, conversation and a lot of confusion. Toxic masculinity has become this like really broad general term that if I don't like something about, you know, uh, manhood or being male, then it just kind of gets thrown into this, into this category. And in some yeah. ways it's lost its luster of what it actually, what it actually means, which you've done some research, uh, on toxic masculinity from WebMD. And so how about we just dive into that? Because this is, this is going to be kind of fun. Absolutely. Yeah. So they, uh, they gave a, a bullet list of, of aspects of toxic masculinity. So the, the, the first one was a need to control. Uh, that, that toxic masculinity, it, it encourages men to assert their power and dominance. And there's, there's, there's data behind that, but, uh, but it's the idea of uh, stepping into a situation and commanding control. Um, so yeah, yeah, I would and, say this is... Oh, go ahead. No, I mean, there's... There's positive aspects of that, right? Of 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 uh, having someone that stabilizes the situation, and then I think there's situations where a narcissist can walk into a room and kind of make it about themselves, you know. So, yeah, absolutely. I think when it comes to toxic masculinity, this is probably the one that like shoots to the top of the list when I'm thinking about masculinity and 
when it comes to how it is toxic is just seeing how men throughout history have used their power, their prestige, their physical bigness, right, to exert yeah. power uh, or control over vulnerable. And so for me, you know, while there is a lot of confusion and why I kind of joked at the beginning, like, what is it? Uh, this one for me really does rise to the top of the top of the list. Yeah. A second on the list was a promiscuity that uh, that it praises men for having me- mul- mul- multiple sexual partners while expressing di- disgust at women who do the same thing. I'm I'm curious what what that looks like in 2023. You know, like if it's it's still. <laughs> right. uh, but um, yeah, but that idea of of a guys a guys kind of live more more of a tramp life and and it's mm. almost encouraged. And I don't know. I mean, I I don't. I don't live in that world, right? So I, I don't, I don't know a lot of guys that live by that code. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a little oblivious to that. Yeah. Do you think culture is changing? This may be a little bit off topic, but do you think culture is changing in that way, where, you know, to be a, um, a man who sleeps with a lot of different women was seen as like this elevated conquest, um, but if you're a woman on the same end, um, sleeping with a lot of guys, you are automatically marked a whore. Do you think that, Yeah. you think culturally that, is that what you're asking in 2023? It'll be interesting to see how that changes. Yeah. 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 And, and I mean, not, not, not getting too controversial, but I mean, even a lot of the conversations about pro-choice are, Mm -hmm. are really written about if I, if I need to have an abortion and it's like, well, you're, you, you know, you, you have the ability to actually have a lot of say in that in most situations. Does it make sense? But, yeah. uh, but if you're living a lifestyle of promiscuity, yeah, that, the, the, uh, that's going to come up more often. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, absolutely. I, so uh, the next one, which I thought was really interesting was refusing to help with household duties that to- toxic masculinity rejects roles traditionally considered women's work. Um, yeah. I married a strong woman, so I, yeah, I've got my household duties, buddy, so. <laughs> Enough said on that one. What's the next one? <laughs> so uh, risk-taking, um, and uh, this was an interesting one e- even be- be- before we came on, on air, that taking risks and suppressing fear is another feature of toxic masculinity, and uh, you, you, uh, you had a lot of good stuff about this one. Yeah, I actually kind of push back on this one because it's something that we um, ultimately also value, right? Like when it comes to risk-taking, certainly risk-taking that leads to destructive behaviors such as, you know, drug abuse or, um, you know, gambling addictions, um, stuff like that. That that type of risk-taking is obviously going to lead you down a road that's detrimental. But there is, yeah. there's risk-taking that we celebrate, right? I mean, when it comes to a man who takes a risk and has everything to lose by starting a business or an organization that he believes in and he runs after that dream, uh, that's a huge risk uh, financially, relationally, socially. Uh, and yet that's a risk that I think is worth celebrating. And actually when we open the Bible, right, we, we, we see over and over again, like, like you know, Fear not, be mm-hmm. courageous. Um, there is this, you know, this idea particularly commanded towards men to step up and to live lives that that have a certain amount of risk to it. Yeah, yeah, and and I mean, I I, I think about, I mean, I'm a bit of a World War II buff, right? And and I'm I'm in awe of the the men who. A uh, hopped off a landing craft on N- Normandy Beach or Iwo Jima. I mean, it's like, gosh, the courage that it takes to yeah. to cl- a climb off a ship onto this small boat, and y- uh, you could be walking right into your your own grave. And yeah, and yet totally D Day. We're glad they yeah. suppressed their fear and walked in <laughs> with some risk. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, that one, that one, maybe maybe WebMD needs to kind of expand a bit. Uh, <laughs> but neither of us are any- doctors, so <laughs> you know, maybe they'll listen to our podcast and reconsider. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, th- the next is sexual aggression toward women, and uh, and it uh, made me think of some 
articles that I read about like a pornography and different areas of pornography and like I mean even like violence in the sexual acts are actually mm. a whole genre that 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 uh, that is a I don't know a fetish or an area of interest which which seems you know there's uh, there's a lot to like about sex already that I I don't understand adding that sexual aggression uh, toward women as an aspect of yeah I mean that's a it's a, a very unhealthy uh, bent, but yeah. Yeah, I would say, you know, culturally we see uh, the, uh, how culture is really resonating around this particular part of toxic masculinity with, uh, what's the baseball player's name, Bauer? Oh, yeah. Is it Bauer? Yep, yep. Yeah, who uh, all of this came out about him and uh, how culture has really turned on him. And even in a pro sports world, right, where we always say winning's number one, and if you have talent, you get chances. Uh, you know, he's he's the guy that nobody's touching right now because of yeah. this part, this part of his life that is toxic. Yeah. The next one is stoicism. Uh, just just the idea of of not showing emotion or weakness. Matter of fact, uh, showing emotion and weakness are considered feminine. And uh, yeah, I mean, w- like, like uh, growing up, I mean, were you encouraged to um, embrace emotions and express and talk about them or what? Yeah. What, what's your no. story there, Matt? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, uh, we weren't necessarily <laughs> discouraged. Maybe, well, maybe that's not even true either. Right. It was like, man, if you got hurt playing sports or whatever, it was get up, you know, throw some dust on it, you know, S- you know. There's no crying in baseball, yeah. that kind of attitude <laughs> uh, that, we, that we lived with growing up. And part of it, I think, probably came from, you know, the sports that I played, like hockey, which is a pretty, you know, manly, quote unquote, sport, you know, where uh, violence and aggression and, uh, is elevated yeah. and where pain and tears are, you know, really uh, diminished in that. And so that, and, you know, I come from a, a long line of uh, farmers and cattlemen and, you know, work is hard. Life is tough. Uh, you make the best with what God gives you and you take each day at a time, right? And there's not a lot of, not a lot of space for, for emotion in a, in that kind of worldview. Yeah. Yeah. How about and, you? And How about growing yeah. up in California? You know, soft California, was that, <laughs> was that different? No, because yeah, because my my uh, dad was an executive, and and yeah, and and really, I mean, emotions and feelings didn't mm. didn't move the ball forward. Does it make sense? Yeah. So so I think uh, for me, like when I when I felt something, I would. It wasn't necessarily like 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 taught to me, but I I felt like it was just wasted energy. Yeah. Where now, many years later, I mean, like especially in in spiritual matters, like when. When I feel something, when I feel sad or when I feel, when I can identify fear, um, I'm actually kind of glad because it penetrated the hard outer shell of, of, of me as a, as a person. Does it make sense? And, yeah, absolutely. And, and I experienced like God in a tender way, which I think for a lot of boys, like their, their relationship with their dads, like it wasn't tender. I mean, a tender was... A rolling around on the ground and wrestling, or yeah. you know, him him beating you at, at hoops in the backyard. <laughs> my life too. That was my <laughs> life too. So, how about so, the last and, one? Yeah. So the last one is violence. Um, that uh, that it's that it's uh, celebrating um, dominance and masculinity. I mean, mm. uh, clearly in in movie genres, right? I mean, uh, yeah. you and I like I uh, rattled off a long list of movies that. Movies that guys dig, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and ask the question, like, what about them? Why is it that we dig them? You know, what, what is so fascinating to us about John Wick that they've made four of them? Yeah. You know, or that every guy that I know when Jack Reacher came out, we sat down and watched, you know, we binged the whole thing and we've been waiting a year for the next one, you yeah. know? Or, yeah. or even in our, um, you know, our sphere right now, the Jack Ryans just got released, you know, two months ago and... Uh, season three, and that's some of the conversation that that I've had been having with guys, and it's like all of these characters actually demonstrate uh, a fair amount of these toxic traits that WebMD uh, 
has just listed for us. And I don't know that I necessarily disagree with any of these traits, but one of the fascinating things is like, what does it, what is it that resonates with us? Is it identity? Mm -hmm. You know, is it aspiration? Um, Is it that we are some, at some level able to separate the entertainment and we're just entertained by, you know, the violence of John Wick? Like, like there's something there that draws guys to it. I have my ideas, but I'd like to hear yours. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think a lot of it comes down to uh, there's something that God puts in the heart of, of men and women that is a uniquely part of his design. I mean, like I, I think uh, back to uh, years ago reading a book, a wild, a wild at Heart by John Eldridge. And one of his big points is that, that, that there, uh, there's a battle to fight. And, and so there, uh, there's something in the life of a man that you need to step up and step into by, by God's design. Like the, the world needs you mm. and you have what it takes to enter that. And it, it uh, doesn't have to be a war. It doesn't have to be like a physical thing. It could just be like, hey, I, I, I met a, a woman and I, I'm going to walk the rest of my days loving her well. Or now yeah. I'm a dad. And, and um, I mean, like uh, for me, when our daughter was born and I held her in the hospital and, and like the image came to my mind of if this, if this goes the way it should, this person is going to be standing over my grave one day. And yeah. it was actually a come, like it was a beautiful moment for me because it gave me a perspective on the rest yeah. of my life from there forward. Like, like this person is going to be standing there when I'm done here on earth. If, yeah. if, if I play my part correctly and if, does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that part of, you know, the um, draw to these masculine figures in the movies or what we have going on is a little bit that's happened in our culture in terms of like the feminization mm-hmm. of men and what men have always struggled with, which is peacetime. Like when we live in a relatively peaceful time, which, you know, where we live culturally speaking is relatively peaceful. Uh, we, we have a real struggle as men with purpose and identity and what is our role. And, uh, you know, when we can escape into the reachers and the wicks of the world, uh, they live in a world worth fighting for. They're fighting for something that probably is very instrumental in our, in our own lives that we just don't know how to quite uh, live out in a, in a world that doesn't require us to beat faces in. Not that yeah. most of us today are actually equipped to do that, but you know, there's something in us that that that's there. And so I think you're right. I think like you know, part of um, when I say the feminization of of men, what I'm actually probably more specifically saying is that there's not actually something for men to be lived up to. Yeah, like yeah. we 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 live in a world where where boys, um, you know, are largely not raised by their fathers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they go to schools where all of their teachers are female, right? Like for my two young boys, um, they had one male, stu- uh, one male teacher in all of elementary school. And um, even men are the minority in middle schools as well, right? Like there's not a masculine figure to, to look up to. And then with the, um, you know, with as biblical literacy, I would say, diminishes so does the picture of what manhood actually should be. And now we're lost. And so we're just grasping for whatever we think. So we look at somebody like, you know, Reacher, who's tough, who, you know, seemingly does the right thing. Um, most of the time, even if he takes, you know, back roads and bad roads to get there, he's fighting for quote unquote good. Um, he seems to have an affinity for people he likes. Mm-hmm. And it's like, all right, well, that's a that's as good a picture as I have of masculinity when there's so much more, which I think is ultimately where this conversation goes, right? Is, um, is that you have been instrumental in starting something at Crossroads called the pursuit. And you have a group of guys who are actually working through like, what does it look like to be a man? What, what is a man? And maybe you could speak a little bit to that. Yeah. 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 So our, our, a desire is really to uh, connect guys to, to talk, to open up about, our lives, our stories, what happened in our past, what what happened to us, what we did, and really allow God in into that story to heal some things, to confirm some things, to strengthen us. But but really, you uh, you actually challenged us a while back and said, 
it's a so good to go back and allow God to heal and restore the past. But what are you what are you inviting men to? And yeah. uh, so we've uh, we've been really thinking and talking and praying about that very subject. And the the interesting thing, like for for Christians in the Bible, is most of the men in the Bible did this poorly. Like yes, yeah. so like most most men, it's descriptive of what they did. It's not prescriptive, right? So even right. even people that we made heroes, I mean, David, uh, David's probably the most celebrated guy other than Jesus in the Bible, but he, I mean, he he messed a lot of stuff up, right? And, you <laughs> Seven know, so. wives, thousands of harems, killed someone. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's not an example of like, this is what it looks like to be manly. Yeah, and then uh, for us really looking at Jesus, God took on flesh and he dwelt amongst us. And in Jesus, we see all of these beautiful attributes of, of God expressed in man, which points us as men, what we can aspire toward. So kind, kind of a rattling down, down the list and, and we, uh, we can unpack it and I'll, I'll, I'll do all of them and then we'll recircle. So the first yeah. is under, under authority. The second is intentionally active, strong and courageous, honorable with integrity, loving and compassionate, selfless and humble, and then faithful and wise. So yeah. under authority. So what, what uh, comes to mind when you hear that, Matt? Yeah, I think that you know the idea behind that is really that each and every one of us are under authority. You know, even if we are CEO of our company, there's an authority above us. And, you know, from a biblical worldview, that authority is God. That authority is Jesus in our lives, where we submit our lives to him and uh, give our lives in full to him. And the word that we use often is submission, you know, mm-hmm. that, that we are in submission to, to God. Now, ultimately, every guy is that, right? But we also have in the Bible, you know, there is a, that we are that um, Paul calls us in Ephesians, right? In the great Ephesians 5 passage on marriage, on marriage to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So there's this idea that we're actually in constant submission to one another, that there's authorities in our lives, whether that be our wives, our bosses, our friends, right? That, are, that, that have input into our lives in which we go, okay, I'm going to submit, which I think biblically just simply means that I consider your needs above my own. That's yeah. what, that's what a, beautiful picture of submission looks like. And so when it comes to under authority, that's really what I think about first and foremost to God. But then God says, you know what? That actually like comes down in a lot of different parts in your life. So good, Matt. So good. And, and uh, hearing that, I mean, uh, thinking that like, like, yeah, everybody has a degree of influence and a, de- a degree of authority, right? Yeah. And yet, and yet I think what, what's missed and what might, might feed into toxic masculinity is, is uh, there should be a heavy spoonful of humility with Absolutely. any platform that you because I mean yeah you you were able to you know have three kids but the legacy of your family is is based on how you lead and love your family right so so yeah, yeah. so it, I mean it, yeah well that's yeah, good and I really yeah I really love the second one that you mentioned uh, intentionally active. You know, one of the things that I've taught my kids is that we accept responsibility and we Mm -hmm. reject passivity um, for my boys specifically. And that's a marker that we go back to time and time and time again, because I think it's, uh, I don't know what it is about us guys, but our default is to really like, you know, um, to be passive in this world. And it's like, no, 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 no. The, The call of manhood is actually to intentionally be active to reject that passivity, to see responsibility and to grab a hold of it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a really good and and really I I think one of our drivers to be passive is is fear, right? Mm. Like 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 I mean I'm I mean it's tax time and man math has always been a bugger for me, right? And and numbers scare me, especially numbers that I'm accountable for, right? Yeah. So it's like <laughs> so so I mean it. I mean it's easy for me to put off something like that because it exposes my ignorance when it comes to an area of study that has bogged me down since since elementary school. But yeah. I still need to step into it. 
Yeah, yeah. The uh, the next one that you had listed there was honorable and integrity with integrity. And years ago, probably a decade now or so, I read a really great book by Henry Cloud yeah. called Integrity. And it was I actually had an opportunity to take a class with him. And so I was in this, this class with him. And the way that he kind of describes integrity is if you picture a boat, you know, motoring around a lake and the wake that comes off that boat, that's your integrity, right? Mm. And so if you're a skier or you're, you know, on a tube or whatnot, um, where that boat drives, right, like as you're skiing or tubing in the back, like you feel the result of, of that driver. Like that's the integrity of your life and, um, you know, living in that wake. And so I've always been really cognizant of that, of that example of like, of the people, am I living a life where people who are living in my wake go, yeah, like he's, he's doing it well. That's so good. Wow, what a what a what a great picture. And it's one of the things that you can't really manipulate it, right? It's like uh-uh. like every word you say or every action you do is going to send w- these reverberating uh waves out out into the lake. And, it, and it's either positive or or it actually undermines you. Yeah. Yeah, it does. So, talk about that last one, being faithful. So the way that you guys have it written here, nobody can see it on the podcast, but is the word faith, and that not F-U-L, but F-U-L-L. So speak about speak about what that looks like. Yeah. So I mean, really, I think I think apart from a Christian worldview, I think a guys would probably agree with most everything else we've said. But yeah. uh, but the unique thing for us is that God God calls us to be intentionally active, strong and courageous, honorable, integrity, but we're, we're doing it through faith. So we're mm. doing it believing that, that God has a redemptive energy, if you will, yeah. that, he want, that He wants to actually you play through me. So uh, rather mm. than just us working harder to make it happen, like the, the, the idea of being uh, faithful is that I believe that God wants to and He can empower me to to write a beautiful narrative which for most of us i mean i'm super proud of my dad and where where he grew up and what he did for my family but i want to move the needle forward and yeah. and and realizing that the god of the universe actually wants to not only hold me accountable to that but to actually empower me to do that is super exciting yeah absolutely it absolutely is and one of the cool things about the pursuit that we've been walking through is uh, over the last, I don't know, six months or so is really the vulnerability of guys to walk in and for us to have these kind of conversations about what is the, what is the picture you know, that we're aiming for? What is it that's getting in the way? What are the barriers and the roadblocks and the cliffs <laughs> that we find ourselves in? And you know, what's the history that we're coming out of that impacts our lives so, so much? And you know, for the the uh, 60 to 100 guys who attend every time, like we walk away refreshed. And so I think it would only be, you know, appropriate as we end this podcast, if we're looking to um, really, if somebody here today is listening and really wants to engage in conversation like this, yeah. what's that look like to be a part of the pursuit at Crossroads? Absolutely. Yeah. So we, we meet, uh, we meet once a month. It's uh, typically the last Tuesday night of every month, but, but if, but if you go to the Crossroads website, crossroadsabc.com, uh, you, can, you can find out uh, the uh, specifics of our uh, next, next uh, gathering. And, and really what, what we do is we, we present a topic and we break into discussion groups for about an hour. And it's, a, and it's amazing because we're having, you know, yeah, a 60 to 100 guys from 17 years old up to, up to 80 years yeah. old and and having that breadth of wisdom and experience and hardships and again we we want to be faithful we want to believe that God um, God wants to enter your story so so for people that are listening it, if this inspires you but you feel kind of stuck um, I'd like to encourage you like God believes in you and yeah. uh, he and he really wants to enter your story and the pursuit is a great place for a uh, real guys to circle up and, and to take a step into this. Yeah. And if you're not in the Denver area 
and you're listening to this podcast and you think, man, I need to be a part of a men's group as well. Like, I just encourage you to reach out to us. You can do info at crossroadsabc.com. Uh, email us there and we'll work to try to figure out how to connect you in a men's group in a church uh, near you because there are, um, this is so, so important. One of the huge drivers at Crossroads is really speaking to men and speaking to men's hearts uh, because of the way how much culture has has changed or really spoken or just the lostness that we feel as men in culture. Maybe that's the best way to say it. And so, um, yeah, we're really driven in that way. And uh, James, you're doing an amazing job with the pursuit. And so as we, as we close this up, I'll just give you the last word and then I'll sign off. Awesome. Well, hey guys, we uh, believe in, in what God created, that, that there's something beautiful about, um, about uh, women who are fully empowered and fully alive. And there's something beautiful about men who really embrace uh, the masculine journey and, 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 and live lives as sons of God, like living under his authority. So we, uh, we're, we're pursuing this ourselves. We're, we're leading our families into it. And uh, we would love to join you in that. So uh, yeah, anytime, anytime you want to connect with us or, uh, yeah, or uh, reach out, we, uh, we would love to partner with you in that. Yeah. Well, we have had a lot to talk about today, and there's probably a lot more in the future that we can talk about on this issue, and we will, but we'll call it a day today. And so, James, thanks for leading us in this topic, and uh, man, we'll see you next time. See ya. Thank you for listening to Collision. This podcast is a production of Crossroads Church in Thornton, Colorado. For more excellent content, please visit crossroadsabc.com.